Pamela Young did a good report. And I feel like, I believe she said there was no abuse of power. And I assumed, I really felt like there was an abuse of authority. Um, let's not play too much with those words, but I felt like there were, there were legal, and she, I think she referenced according to state law. Now I could be wrong because I haven't looked at her report in several weeks. She did what she was supposed to do and she was attacked at the beginning of the meeting. And there was reason for that rage and that anger, but it was still an attack. And we have to come to, and we're doing that to each other. And this council really needs to open up and find a way to really have honest discussions among ourselves. And we, we have to do that publicly, or we could, you know, I'm Chalonet and I will not offer you another chance to do an anti-racism training, which you, the original council fought tooth and nail and minimally changed from. I'm asking you each to look at yourself. And I'm saying this to the members of the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. I'm saying it to the former members of the Community Safety Working Group. I'm saying it to our police department. I'm saying it to our town manager and our staff, whatever their position is in the town. Look at yourself because we have automatic responses that are damaging to others. And we often don't even know they're there. And when we do know they're there, we don't try to fix it very often. And we need to fix this and there's no easy fix. So God damn it, when are we gonna get together and really talk? When are we gonna get together so we can stop feeling scared to say whatever we think. Because the only way that we're going to learn is by making mistakes. I, I, part of the emotion, and I'm making an assumption here, Lynn, so correct me if I'm wrong. Part of the assumption, we, we, we're so into shaming and blaming that it becomes almost impossible for an intelligent woman to write a letter. So I really want us to look at ourselves and to think about what we're doing, to think about how we hurt others and what we can do to change so that all voices really are heard. And I'll go back to something, and I'm, then I'm going to shut up because I know I'm taking too much time. Because you didn't feel like you got what you wanted doesn't mean you weren't heard. And we have to take the next steps and assume some basis of, for collaboration. That's enough for me. Thanks, Pat. Dorothy. I'm coming back to the letter. Um, I think the letter is written is not the letter we want to send at this time. However, I think some letter must be sent because people are tired of not getting an answer. I think that you were right on target, Lynn, when you said that we have to talk about what we can do and what we can't do. So I'm thinking that maybe a very simple letter in which you just tell the truth, which is certain things the council can do and some things we can't do. And we understand their frustration and we will try to work to accomplish some of the things that the people from the CSSJC have asked for. I mean, words can't do it all, okay? And I, I know that we who believe in the word sometimes get hung up and think that they can, but you said we really can't do, and the town council doesn't have the power 
to do some of the things that they want us to do. So what can we do? What remains to be done? And where do they turn? But I do think you need to have, we need to write an answer because a letter, because there's been a, a, a very deep sense of frustration of you know, the committee reaching out and feeling that no one is listening. We are listening. The matter is very complex. We don't have the answers, but this is what we can do or what we can't do. And that we're hoping to work with them on helping solve some of the problems. That's what the letter says already. Mm, it just says we can't ever get a report from the police. And I don't think that, um, I, I don't accept that. So um, I think that they can, under their own terms, may want to give some kind of response. Now, the word investigative is a word I think uh, that, you know, I don't think I'd like it to give an investigative report myself, okay? But a report is another matter. Andy, Joe. I move to postpone this discussion to November 7th at um, 9 p.m. Second. You postponed this, the date, the letter. I didn't hear you. Yes, the discussion and letter to okay. November 7 at 9 p.m. Okay. There has been a motion to move. There's been a motion to postpone the discussion to November 7th at 9 p.m. And it's been seconded. Further discussion? Alicia? Um, thank you. So I was, sorry, it's, hard because I just got changed in the direction of where I was going with this, but I agree with Dorothy in what she just said. And I also agree with the sentiments of like moving away from this conversation. However, I don't think we should revisit the conversation of the letter on November 7th, because I think we need to have a different discussion on November 7th and not the contents of this letter specifically. And so I would hope that we could actually just like table this whole letter and and schedule for a conversation about all of these topics, because I think I agree that we should have a bigger conversation, that this is a really deep conversation, a really challenging conversation that we maybe did not spend enough time on um, and that that might be scheduled for the seventh. And I think that it might be even helpful to invite the CSSJC to come have a discussion with us on November 7th because we don't have a response and we don't have a letter for them because it doesn't seem like this meeting is going to result in a response to CSSJC. And so maybe that could be a way to tie all things together in terms of mending their frustrations, building relationships, moving forward, making sure everyone's heard not rushing things, but also still making things move along. I think not coming back to this specific letter, but still moving forward in this conversation on the 7th is something I'd be interested in. So I think like maybe an amendment to this motion I would support, but not specifically just coming back to this letter. And your amendment to the motion? Um, I would maybe, oh, sorry, go ahead. I would be happy to change it to a motion to table. Um, and then would that still allow us to have a conversation on the 7th, not regarding the specific letter, but like this topic in general? That's the, it, yeah. Okay. Yes, it it so I would be in agreement to that. My to whole, sorry, my only second part of that is that would it be possible to invite the CSSJC to at least a portion of that conversation? We can do whatever the council has asked. So the, right now the motion is to table and that's been seconded. The other motion was withdrawn. We're just going on to the new motion. The motion is to table the letter that's been seconded. And then Alicia is asking that on the seventh, I'm just, boy, I'm just- I'm That might not be a wise meeting to invite other committees given what's already scheduled for that meeting and the time we start. I think that's something that needs discussed 
out of committee, out of council meeting yeah, in terms of I, when you I could schedule it. I think the date for when we do this is, I mean, I'm looking at future agendas and I'm just going, yeah, right. Um, I'm not saying we shouldn't have a conversation and I'm, and I'm certainly not saying we shouldn't invite CSSJC, but I'm trying to figure out when we can do that. And given everything else that we need to get done. So uh, Alicia, so are you satisfied with the motion to table the letter and that's one motion. And then the other one is to look for a time when we can jointly meet with CSSJC to discuss next steps. Um, so yeah, I would support the motion to table, um, <clears throat> but I would probably uh, propose a different motion after. So if we want to, because I don't think we should just look for a meeting. I think we should just schedule one. So I don't know if we want to move forward with the motion to table first and then take up the second issue or if you're trying to push them together. Okay. Let's deal with the motion to table. Is there any further discussion on the motion motion to table? And I'm, I will just recognize that other people, Michelle, Pat, and, and Shalini have their hands up. If you would like to speak to this, leave your hand up. If not, I'll come back to you in that order. Okay, Michelle. I definitely support this motion. Um, I also want to point out that um, at least several of the members of the um, committee are in the attendees. And so while um, we don't have a letter immediately, um, there is some awareness that we are having this dialogue and discussion. And I think that's a positive thing. Um, what I'm most wondering about is why Mandy uh, recommended the seventh and why we wouldn't take this up at our very next meeting. I understand we have a big agenda, but this is now four months uh, in the making that we haven't dealt with this. And it's, I see absolutely no reason why we would carry it on any longer. And I would strongly recommend that we take it up on the 17th um, with the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee uh, for some portion of that. Okay. Um, Shalini. If, uh, would it be like whatever we decide is the next, when we are gonna talk about this again, would it be possible to get more information with respect to some of the things that we've um, put forward in terms of, you know, what led up to that, what happened, what has been the outreach to the youth and any other information that can be shared. And I think that should help us determine when we have this discussion is when we're able to get that information. So that was one thing I wanted to say. And I just wanted to say that now we may not get a chance later, but you know, as we're having these conversations, it's something related to what Pat said. And I just want to invite us to bring in the value that we added recently of grace and which is we value allowing people the space to be human to make mistakes and to learn and grow from those mistakes to experience adverse situations without thinking of themselves or others as lesser than and to be their authentic selves and i'm hoping that this we really hold this value to our hearts and as we make space for uh, all of us, as Pat invited us to do, as we reflect on our own values and mistakes we may have made in this process and make space for other people also in this process, whether it's town staff, whether it was the youth, whether it's CSSJC or, you know, all of us, can we work towards, we are collectively responsible for creating the space that makes space for grace, that makes space for all of us to really have these honest conversations and see where did the mistake happen? And it's okay that that happened, but how can we correct for that? And then what was the harm, if any, because we have and none of us have spoken to the youth or have information we know anonymously 
if he attended any of the CSA, which I have been watching some of the meetings, there is some letters anonymously, but we don't know how many families. There was no real document there. I just heard it, but I didn't see a written letter unless it's come forward. So I just mean there are all these different pieces of information. And then as what is our role as a town councilor, I don't feel it is to tell Paul or DEI how they should work. But it is our role, in my mind, it is our role to create these safe spaces for um, when community reaches out to us with an issue, you know, it's the same with, I mean, it's not the same, obviously this is a much more profound issue, but even with small issues like potholes and all, when people reach us, we don't say that's not our purview. We write to Paul and we create a space and we advocate for our residents. And this is a much deeper, profound issue impacting so many people. So I really do feel it's our role to hold that space where we can all have this conversation to make sure that the residents are heard and that we are making sure that the town staff is communicating and uh, about what is happening. So all that to say that I, maybe the next meeting date should be decided based on hearing from Paul when he thinks that we could get more information. Paul, are you prepared to answer that question at this point? Sure. So I can confer with the DEI director. I, you know, I think she feels that her report was very thorough and professionally done and address the issues, the issues of law and the issues uh, at hand. Um, I can talk with her um, tomorrow about what additional information the, the police department might be releasing. Uh, as I said earlier, I believe the police chief intends to, to um, address some of these issues. Um, no, I, and I value um, what the counselors have said um, tonight. And, you know, so Alicia brought up some points about um, you know, how do we respond? What do we learn and what, how do we respond to situations like this going forward? I think we have learned a lot and I think we have very valuable employees, especially, especially um, in our police chief and our um, uh, DEI director. And uh, we can set uh, protocols for how we address things going forward in a, more, um, in, in a way that's more attuned with what the community is expecting. I do have to say with everything going on that, um, you know, our police department is superior and, um, you know, it's really hard to work for this town. Um, and it's not just um, police department, a lot of employees feel this way. And I, I appreciate what Shalini is saying about um, safe space. And I think that that's really important, um, but retaining quality employees is a big challenge for us right now. And um, so I, I, we work really hard uh, to engage our employees to be in, to stay involved with our community and to be aligned with our community's needs. Um, but I, I think it's a real challenge is all I'm gonna say. Pat? It's a huge challenge. Uh, for all of us. And what I would like to see is not time set aside in a council meeting where the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee gets invited in to talk with us. I think we need to set up a separate time, whether we call it a retreat or whatever, where the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee, um, member, the former members of the Community Safety Working Group and the council uh, and and get together and begin to have some kind of conversation. Um, and I know that has to be public. Um, and I think that's a risk that we can take. I also would, so I my recommendation is that we set aside a time that's specifically for us to learn how to talk with each other and collaborate with each other. And if we're not going to do that, then we're going to have like all the pressures of, of uh, well, I, I gave them an hour. What more did they want, you know, or, or whatever, or I didn't, 
I think we need to set aside real time, um, separate from a council meeting. Um, we need to see each other as the flawed beings that we are, that we all are, including members of the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. Um, so that I, I don't know whether I, I make a motion that we set aside and uh, with a retreat time and do it in the next, do it in the next two months. I'd let's, like to see. Second. I think that's, let's do that, but let's deal with a motion that's on the table. I'm sorry to be bureaucratic about this, but. No, nope, that's fine. That's fine. The motion on the table is to table the letter. Uh, it's been made and seconded. Are there any other comments about tabling the discussion regarding the letter? It's not to a time certain, it's just to table it. Shalini? Okay, I think this is related to tabling, that even though we're tabling the letter, but can you still just write a letter to that uh, CSSJC that we had this conversation and it's uh, we've realized the complexity, blah, blah, blah. And that, uh, so we are, just to keep them informed in a formal way, that we we did have this and we want to do this in a more thoughtful way and so we have tabled it just so even though we're tabling it you will still write a formal letter i can communicate that either yeah. by letter or email to them yes thank you any further discussion on the motion then we're going to move to a vote on the motion to table and the motion um, we'll begin with Anika. Yes. Michelle. Aye. Dorothy. Yes. Pam. Yes. Kathy. Yes. Andy. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. Alicia? Yes. Shalini? Yes. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Anna? Aye. Lynn Griesmers and I, Mandy Joe? Aye. It's unanimous to table. All right. So then I've heard several suggestions. One is to establish a date and time certain that we would meet with the CSSJC um, with perhaps members that were part of the CSWG. I would even suggest the Human Rights Commission if we're going to have that discussion, since they are also involved in many of these issues. Um, but let's see what people have to say. Alicia? Um, thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. So yes, I agree um, with that proposal, but I think that that should be in addition to also having it added to our agenda. Because again, like we said, this is a very complex issue. We can see that it can take up a lot of time and I do not think one conversation will be enough. No. I also think that they are different, semi different topics. Like this is regarding specifics of like town council process and town council actions and that we should have that discussion at our next meeting separate and aside from having a conversation with the CSS JC and, uh, former CSWG members and the Human Rights Commission at a retreat, I think both. Like, I don't think it's a one or the other kind of thing. And I think like, I understand our agenda are really long and our meetings go very late. Um, however, I agree with Michelle and that having this conversation sooner than later would should be prioritized because it has already been a significant amount of time. And that maybe we could do something like adding it to the next agenda item and putting a time limit because there will be an additional retreat also scheduled. But I think that there needs to be more than one conversation. Yeah. And, and you are suggesting that on the 17th that the CSSJC, who is asked to come back to a meeting, I mean, I want to be very clear, we were trying to structure when and for what purpose, but you're suggesting that we have a meeting part of our meeting on the 17th be with the CSSJC for the purpose of, and this is what I need to know. 
Um, so, yeah, so I think we should talk more specifically about like the council process in regards to this specific like contents of this letter, because we talked a lot about like, this is not what the council is supposed to be doing. So like, what are we supposed to be doing and what do we agree is the right or correct council response? Um, also, we talked a little bit about getting more information and that Paul would be outreaching. So also maybe an update from Paul in regards to what he was able to find out when he did reach out to X, Y, and Z. Um, and basically just like an update of all of those things, what our possible council actions are, and maybe we can set a time limit on that so that we can have it at the next meeting. We can have the CSS JC be there and not have it affect our very long already agenda, but that we know that we are starting the conversation and that it will be continued in a retreat style where that conversation can be completely dedicated to this topic. I just worry about the amount of time that will be between then and when we can schedule a retreat where all members of all committees can be there and this can happen. So I would like that conversation to be started more immediately and that we can then look at continuing it in a more in-depth way. Okay, um, Dorothy. So uh, Alicia, when you say you want the CSSJC to be there, do you mean as they are today, silent as panelists, or do you mean oh in the picture God. with us as members who can raise their hands and talk? Yeah, like a part of the conversation, part because I think that, because, right. especially That's what because we were unable to respond to their letter, I think that is just helpful. Like we can let them know, hey, this is the update. This is what Paul is telling us. They, okay. like Michelle said, a lot of them are here tonight. So I know a lot of them have heard the conversation. I know Lynn has um, said that she would be willing to send an email update. So I don't think that they'll be completely lost, but I do think that there are things that have not been covered because we didn't respond to their letter and we are tabling this and we won't be able to come back to it. That should be addressed more or talked about at least a little bit more immediately. And that we can recognize and acknowledge that one conversation is not going to solve any of these things. And so that is the purpose for the more in-depth right. meeting, which we should also probably ask them if they'd be willing and wanting to do something like that before scheduling the retreat itself. And that could also be a conversation at the meeting. Good, good. I like that. Shalini? I definitely feel we have to have that conversation with CSSJC. But my, uh, but for the first two parts of what we're talking about is uh, what is the council role in, in these issues and how do we handle, I don't see a role that CSSJC plays in that, in the first part of that conversation for sure. And then the second thing is, I'm hoping to get some more updates and information from Paul and that again, I think the council needs to process that together in terms of what do we do with this and how do we use this information and then come up with like, okay, this is now we're ready and what what is our response to CSSJC going to be based on what we're hearing and then we invite CSSJC after that. And I think the other angle that when we are talking about is, you know, we are starting to formalize this a little bit more in TSO when we talk about community engagement in terms of how are we interacting with the different committees like ECAC when there's an environmental issue we are like okay we need to contact TAC or the transportation at our ECAC committee and similarly I think we need to just bring and clarify in terms of how are we going to collaborate more with CSSJC on the different sorts of issues and sort of to formalize that as well. And then we talk to CSSJC, okay, this is what we've come up with. What do you feel? What is your you know, feedback response to that? Alicia? Um, so I like, I definitely see where Shalini is going and I partially agree, which is why I wanted to invite them to a portion of the conversation because I know they would have, like they don't have much to do with the council process, although I think that is an important piece that has come up tonight that we should discuss, which is what I meant by that, um, that that's something that we should discuss and probably soon, because again, a lot of time has passed. And so again, my other issue with the waiting and doing this is that the amount of time that has passed and the amount of time we've already waited, and we already thought information would be available that was not, and it's been months. And so even though 
we think we can get that information quickly now, we can just start the process is my thought. And that why come up with something and then run it by them when we can just collectively do it together in a meeting. Mandy Joe. I don't support another conversation on the 17th. I'm looking at the agenda. The meeting starts at 5.30. Um, we haven't yet gotten to one of the discussion items we wanted to get to today. It's 11.30 now. Um, we won't even start business until 6.45 after a public forum. At that meeting, there's a tax classification hearing. There's a lot of other stuff. We're supposed to get water by law and regulations, which will have a long conversation. We're a council that is meant to act. And yes, we require some discussions, but if we were to put anything on the 17th that is discussion based only because there's no action associated with it at this time or proposed action associated with it um, related to this topic, I would ask that it be put after all of the action items on the agenda so that we can make sure our business gets done first. Are there any other comments? I think at this point I need to take everything that's been said and try to figure out how we're going to do it. And Anna, I know you're there to help me do that. <laughs> I got you. Okay. We can do it. All right. Um, Mandy Jo, yes. next item mm -hmm. is rental permitting bylaw. How mm -hmm. would you like to proceed? Um, depends on whether I can have more than an hour in two weeks or not. Oh, you mean, so you, are you suggesting you want to do this as part of the 530? Well, I want it in addition to the 530 if people don't want the conversation tonight because the there's only an hour next week and the entire bylaw will take at least that long to get feedback on. These are three specific areas um, that are very discreet and may not take too long, but I don't want it to cut into the planned discussion next week. So I'm happy to postpone it two weeks from now to two weeks from now, if it does not cut into that hour and gets added to the agenda in another part, or we could try and conclude this discussion fairly quickly tonight. I did write a fairly good memo, I think. You did write an excellent memo. memo. Why don't we, why don't we try to see whether people have some things that they want to consider with this? Alicia, you have your hand up. Yeah, sorry, because I didn't think I was ready to move on from the last topic because I was trying to make a motion. I wasn't trying to just move on because I wanted to have a resolution. And so if like the least of what I was asking is that we put a time limit, a time limited <laughs> conversation on the next agenda and invite the CSSJC and at least discuss finding a time for our retreat or for a more in-depth conversation at the very least be put on our next agenda. Um, I don't feel like we should just move on and have the resolution because then how will something happen at our next meeting if we're ending this meeting without even talking about it? Can, Alicia, can I ask, would it be possible if I request a CSSJC that I come to a meeting with them to see if they are willing to have a retreat. I'm trying to figure out how to if I'm trying to figure out how to set this up so that we don't spend time debating whether we should have a retreat. Well, I don't think it's necessarily about debating whether or not we have a retreat. I think it's about finding figuring out the best time and like Pat said, the best way to be in conversation and in community with each other. And so if they have a different idea as to how they would like to be 
communicating with us in depth, then that's fine. But I'm hoping that they would all agree that a retreat would be a good way that we can all get this conversation across and coming to that agreement quickly. So like, it's more about the time frame for me necessarily and not pushing this off to take even longer to make a decision right. as to how to move forward and to putting it forward so that we can move forward quickly. It's, so it's more about the time frame for me than it is about just finding out if they'd be interested in having a retreat. Paul, do you know when CSSJC is meeting again? Okay. Um, I think I looked for that earlier today yeah. and we couldn't find it. It's either. on the 12th of October. Okay. Um, so we would be able to have an idea for our next meeting, how they would want, because I want, I want to be able to be in conversation with them in a way that makes sense for them right. and in a way that would be meaningful for us so that we can move forward in a way that's comfortable for all of the counselors um, in a timely manner. If it's acceptable, then I would ask CSSJC whether I would be able to come to their meeting to discuss this. Uh, if there are other counselors who would like to do that, I'm more than glad to have that happen. Uh, if it's more than seven, well, I need to be careful about subcommittees too. If it gets to be too many, we have to post it as a uh, joint meeting. And I, I really want to make sure we're not intruding on CSSJC's meetings and also their progress forward. So um, let me reach out and see whether what we can do with that. Uh, Dorothy. I had my hand up to second uh, Alicia's um, uh, motion. Okay, and Alicia, repeat your motion. Was that we add to the agenda for our next meeting in a time limited frame, a conversation with the CSSJC, at least to figure out in what way they want to be in communication and conversation with us to be able to move forward. So if that be scheduling the retreat with them, that's fine. But if they do not want to retreat with us and they want to be in communication with us in some other way, I think we can at least establish that. Okay. Um, their motion's been made and seconded. Is there further discussion, Michelle? Was there a second on the motion? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm tired. Um, I am wondering if it's possible, Lynn, for you to contact the chairs of the committee and talk about the various options so that possibly in this time limited uh, meeting that we would have on the 17th, we might be able to get into some content um, and maybe you with the chairs could mutually agree on, on, on how that might look um, so that we can maybe get that piece out of the way in advance. And I don't know if that impacts the motion. The motion um, and I'm just wanting to ask Alicia um, if Lynn was able to establish some of that prior to the meeting on the 17th, would that be acceptable for us to then move into some discussion on the 17th? Yeah, absolutely. I was just trying to figure out a way to make this happen more quickly than waiting to figure out when we can even talk to them about it, um, which is what I was getting out of how we ended the conversation before. So I'm like open to suggestions, but I think that I want to be in communication with them as soon as possible, even if it's for a limited amount of time. Yeah. And I, whether or not we can get into actual issues in a limited amount of time, I think is questionable, but maybe we can at least agree on what the issues are that we are going to jointly discuss. Is that? Yes. Pam? Pam? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> things just happen at this hour of the night um are there any further questions there's a motion it's been made and seconded then we're going to bring it to a vote please repeat the motion athena can you repeat the motion please 
to add to the next council meeting agenda, a time limited conversation with the CSSJC to have a conversation about how to move forward. Okay. Uh, we're going to start the vote with um, Michelle. Michelle? Aye. Dorothy? Yes. Pam Rooney? Yes. Kathy? Abstain. I'm abstaining because I'm not going to be at the next council meeting. I have to miss it. Okay. Andy? No. Jennifer? Yes. Alicia? Yes. Shalini Balmilm? Yes. Pat? Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier? Aye. Lynn Griesmers and I, Mandy Johanneke? No. Anika Lopes? Aye. Ten in favor, two opposed, one abstention, no absence. Mandy, now we now are we ready to move on? Yes, Mandy Joe. So I wrote a memo. I'm going to make this as quick as possible. You should have read the memo. Thank uh, you. There are three things CRC wants some input on from the rest of the council. Who should adopt regulations? Who should have that authority? And there were options in the memo. Look at page two for those potential options. Others exist. Um, who should adopt fees for the rental permitting? Options are in the memo on page three. Um, and what the fee structure should look like. And the memo on pages three and four, maybe even on five, sort of onto five, um, lists some other towns and what they do. We'd love to have feedback. Is there a specific part of this that you would like to focus on tonight? I mean, all of it. <laughs> Two of them are just who gets the authority and the other one is a structure. And for the structure, I don't want numbers for how much the fee should be. I want what do people prefer for a structure? Graduated, not graduated, anything exempt or anything set at a certain limit. There's a lot of options in there. We just want some feedback as we draft some, you know, fee structures. Okay. Why don't we take one or two of these and just focus on that and see how far we can get in a brief period of time? So, which one do you Let's want? Let's start with regulation authority. Okay. Regulation authority. Some of the options are outlined on page two, including building commissioner, board of license commissioners, town council, town council with the building commissioner, town council, and board of license commissioners and building commissioner, and any mix thereof. Pat. You're muted. You're Pat. muted. I think that the town council should be setting an all initial priorities and, and structure, but that the board of license commission should be able to amend them in the future. So I'm across the board pretty much on that. That is the fifth bullet. Are there any other comments? Dorothy? This is a question. Um, I wondered, as a building commissioner or board of license? Um, board of license. I, I, well, I know Mandy Jo has really looked into this, so I'd love to hear her thoughts on either one, both of them. So in both of these, the Board of License Commissioners has indicated to me when I attended a meeting that they would be willing to have the authority. Um, in past CRC meetings, the Building Commissioner has expressed some concern with having the sole authority to particularly amend regulations, um, feeling that, um, I think the feeling was that he would be more comfortable if a body did it, not a staff member on their own. Thank you very much. So let me just clarify. So that means that 
going with Pat, it would be the town council might establish has the authority to initially adopt. Then we turn it over to the board of license commissioners to amend. And, but the building commissioner still has a role. They just aren't adopting. The building commissioner is one of the enforcers at yeah. this point. Okay. Yeah. So, it, okay. Thank you. That helps me create some clear lines, if you will. Anna? I also support the one, two, three, four, fifth bullet. Uh, I think that having a body, like like you just said, Mandy, when you were talking about what the building commissioner mentioned, having a body of uh, community members being the group who is responsible or having authority to amend them uh, feels better to me than having one individual be the sole decider. However, I think that it makes sense for the council to initially create the uh, create them. So you're supporting bullet five bullet as five. well. Yeah, Michelle. I also support bullet number five. Um, and I just have a question, Mandy. So the actual regulations, once they would be turned over for amendment by the um, Board of License Commissioners, what like what sort of information, where would they be gathering information in order to make amendments? So I don't really know much about that committee and just wondering um, it, what would trigger an amendment and where would they receive the appropriate information to make the amendment? So likely the same place the council would if the council were seeking to amend anything, um, the building commissioner and the town inspectors um, are likely the ones that would seek an amendment, um, possibly ECAC, depending on what's in the regulations, there's potential for energy efficiency requirements to be in them. Um, and so maybe ECAC would recommend a modification of those requirements, um, the building commissioner or the person who handles our permitting in the inspection services department might ask for amendments to the application information that's requested and stuff. So it, it, I, I foresee it, that doesn't mean it would happen, but foresee it the same way the council would, which is since we're not the ones executing the bylaw or the regulations, you have to rely on the people who are executing it to tell you when it's not working or when, when you need to add something and yeah. stuff like that. Um, and the board has a lot of experience um, adopting regulations, which is why they felt they'd be comfortable with this mm -hmm. because they adopt a lot of regulations related to other licenses that they actually administer. Got it. Okay, thank you. Are there any other comments on that particular one? It's so far we have a pretty much of a consensus around five, bullet five. Okay, then. With the that, authority. Let's move on. Uh, fee adoption. Right now, it's all town council. I, I, well, the, the bylaws actually split the way it's drafted right now. The town council for nearly everything but the appeal fee. And the appeal sits with the Board of License Commissioners. I'm not sure that was an intentional thing other than just we're in the middle of drafts. So, you know, things fall through the cracks. But the so, same questions. Right. Ooh. It's so in the, So again, now we're on to page three. At the top, Mandy Jo has outlined the four bullets options, and again, she points out there's endless possibilities. Um, one is the Board of License Commissioner sets all fees, Town Council sets all fees, Town Council does it initially, then Board of License Commissioner amends, and then we split it somehow. That seems sloppy to me, but that's just how I see it. <laughs> just as soon one body or the other. Anna? I mean, I'm going to say the split one, which is the third. Uh, council sets the fees initially, BLC to amend in the future. I think it's also important to have consistency across the two. It's consistent with the earlier decision or the earlier feedback we just gave you. I would agree. Anything else on that one? See, we should always do this at 1130. At I night. was hoping it would be easy. We just, the CRC was like, we don't want to propose something that the council hates. So <laughs> why don't we just ask them? Um, so fee structure. Fee structure. Let's just... This is the one that when it got referred to CRC, this council really wanted us to come to you before we proposed something. Um, so there's a lot of options. Even within the options, there's a lot of options, as you can see from just the few that I pulled. Um, you know, to give you another example, Salem, I do not believe has a permit at all, so they don't have a permit fee. 
but they have a requirement that the Board of Health inspect every dwelling unit that is a rental. And that inspection costs $50 per unit. And that fee covers the initial inspection and the first reinspection if it doesn't pass inspection. Um, and after that, it's $50 every time you have to go back. So there's another potential option right there. The, the options are almost endless on how you want to do it. And we need help with how it wants to be done because that goes into how the bylaw is structured wording wise and permit wise and all of that they interrelate and i'm not going to read each of the gentlemen's that are there um but mandy joe has provided examples or the committee excuse me has provided examples from five or six different towns mandy joe did it okay Pam admits that Mandy Joe did it. Um, are there any particular ones that strike people's thoughts? Michelle. Um, from my perspective, this is the most sticky of the items to decide on and something I want to give a little thought to. I actually have received um, multiple constituent uh, and have notes that I, I'm Sorry, I don't have right here with me, um, but I would love to provide that feedback to you in the CRC. Um, I can put that together in the next day or so and just send it off to you. Um, but I do think this is one for us to really consider um, with a lot of thought. And maybe we collect those and we put this put aside this particular discussion at on the 17th. Is that Jennifer? You have a preference. Uh, yes, but I could go with your suggest. I mean, no, I yeah. no. I think we should get any thoughts out now, and then if yeah. we have to, we'll continue it on the seventeenth. Yeah, I would say Burlington, and it doesn't have to be those exact dollar amounts, but I like it that it incentivizes owner occupancy because we want to do that. So having, I like the structure of a fee per unit, but there being a lesser fee for or. or you know, small speaker owner occupied, um, the transfer of ownership, I don't know if that even applies to us, but the something per unit, we can decide how that's structured, but with incentivizing owner occupied structures. Andy. Well, I'm gonna throw in an, another consideration, but I definitely would like to have some communication about what has been heard and what was the feedback at various forums that you've had. I think it was all over the board from what I heard and but, um, but whether you were able to draw conclusions from it. But in the end, uh, well, we collect fees and uh, we cannot commit that they are going to be used for hiring a um, specific employees inspectors as being most likely to be of interest given the work that's to be done that has to go through the regular budget process um, it's easier to envision how that can happen if the fees are sufficient to cover the costs that are going to be needed to provide the inspections and other work that needs to be done. And uh, so I would like to see some financial analysis that uh, is done with some thought uh, to help uh, make sure that the numbers are gonna work right. Kathy? Um, I'm what Michelle said about this is I need to think about this a bit more um, because what I'm what I don't have is a context, Mandy, and others that have looked at this. So, you know, clearly a Newark is taking a break at a 14, a number, a certain fee per unit up to 14 and a lower fee, 15 or more. And I don't know whether some of these cities or towns have several very large buildings with like 400 units in them and the rest small. 
versus another one, you know, I kind of know Burlington and I can't think of giant apartment buildings there. So, so the impact is different. I do the differential by size. We, Michelle and I have heard at least in one meeting that you want to have a smaller fee for owner occupied and the person just got one rental unit as opposed to multiple rental units. And that's where what I'm seeing is all the variation is above that. Several of them have something for multiple. Boston is Boston's capping it. So they they get up to a certain amount. And there must have been some rationale where they said that's enough. <laughs> you know, so I don't know how harder how complex it would be to provide some context. You know, because it, we've got giant cities here with much smaller cities um, in terms of how many units could be in it and what they're trying to achieve. You know, and if I go, let me just flip it to you. You clearly didn't put New York City on this list, <laughs> but in New York, huge numbers of giant buildings with rental apartments, but they're less concerned about except in certain parts of the city that the landlord will uh, fail to put in smoke alarms or the electrical thing because it's it's high rent districts um, with people who would complain. So you've picked out, I think appropriately places that have large amounts of student rentals or places where landlords might be putting a lot of people in a specific place. Um, so I just I just need a better context to know on scale because that because you're asking uh, your there's three different kinds of variations going on, a, you know, a capping it and a cut off at certain pieces. And there's, you know, I could throw a dart at a board and pick one, but <laughs> So that's that's just my request. I don't know. I wouldn't know how. I normally can just look at something and say, "Oh, I like this one better than that one." Like, well, this would work this way. That would work this way. So I don't know what else you can get for us, or I could get on my own. But I'll think about it. Shalini. Yeah, I just want to add to the piece that we are, or I am, analyzing the hundreds of data points that we've collected. And so we will be re reflecting that, like what are from the landlord's perspective, the fees, and then from the tenant's perspective, how they feel the fees might be impacting them. And so we will add that in. And just in terms of Burlington, yes, they do have seven storied buildings right outside the town hall and stuff. So I think it's pretty comparable actually with the population and similarity that way. Dorothy. Um, I'm looking through all of these and it is easy to get confused, but I noticed it in one of them, I think it's Boulder. It has the um, cost of inspection uh, at 250 uh, per uh, unit, I guess. I thought I remembered some conversation um, with our building um, director, superintendent about what he thought was a reasonable fee for the inspection of an apartment. I'm just wondering if the committee remembers that or has an idea because um, the cost of these things is supposed to be related to the services given, um, but it takes time and effort to do an inspection and there's some paperwork that goes with it too. Um, so does anyone have that on the committee? What uh, Rob Mora thought was a, a reasonable inspection fee for an apartment? Um, so it's currently set at 150 per inspection. Um, that's what we just voted back in May or whenever we voted that. Um, mm -hmm. The committee has not discussed a fee structure at all yet, other than a few thoughts as we've discussed other parts of the bylaw. And so we definitely have not discussed what any amounts might be. That's, that's a discussion once we figure out what the structure might look like and whether the for example, whether the permit fee should cover the first inspection, the required initial inspection or not, right. or should that be an additional cost on top of the permit? Those things make a lot of difference in what mm -hmm. the fees are. Right. And there was some consideration at some point, I thought that that um, buildings about which after the initial inspection, about which there were no complaints, um, so that if the, if the inspection fee is separate from the permit fee, 
um, that somebody who doesn't need to be reinspected does in fact save money for good behavior. I mean, anyway, I, I trust your committee. I think you guys have been working very, very hard in this, and I, I basically have trust in what you come up with. Michelle. A quick question about the upcoming forum for community members. Is that going to be broken out into sections like where you're soliciting input about the fee or about, you know, various sections, or is it just sort of a general um, forum that people can just come and say whatever about whatever? It will be split out similar to the first forum that had sort of specific topics we wanted feedback on, but it will not be the same topics and it will actually be based on the similar concept that we'll be discussing at the council on the 17th, which is the actual working draft um, and the language in that draft. And then, um, so parts of that draft, what people might like, what people might hate, what people would change. <laughs> And one of the things I'll be working on this week is a comparison table between what's in the working draft that CRC has right now and what's in the current bylaw so people can see the differences between the two. And mm -hmm. that will be part of the packet for the 17th as well as the 24th community forum. Thanks. Okay. Um, I, my comments are the following. Um, I want to make sure that we're not just doing a fee for fee sake so that it's a fee tied to a service and that it's not. And if it's a fee because, and if the service is the, because the landlord has not done something, then the landlord pays. But if it's a issue where, you know, you've got seven cars parked outside a four, um, a rental that's for four people, um, that it's, it's somehow or another the renter is also responsible. Uh, what I don't want to see is us just doing something that builds up the cost of rentals, which basically just then gets passed on to the renter. Um, so that, that that's my only input at this point. Are there any other comments for this? Andy. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, pursuant to rule 7.1, I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. There's been a motion to adjourn. It is now midnight. Um, is there a second to the motion? Second. <laughs> okay. Is there any further discussion? Thank you, Andy. <laughs> Turn into a pumpkin or something. <laughs> we will, um, Kat, Mandy, Joe, do you feel like we need to continue this discussion? I think we're good for now. Okay. Um, I just have one other quick thing. Can I just say it before we adjourn? Uh, please make sure that you use the second email that I sent you with the word version for the town manager evaluation, not the one that gives me the option of collecting all the data because I don't want to have some in one and some in the other. So use the one, I will send you another copy tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and other than that. We need to vote. We need a vote. Um, all those in favor of adjourning, please say yes. And uh, be roll call. I, I have to do roll call. Uh, uh, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm trying to find space on my roll calls. I use them for so many other things. Okay, uh, we're going to start with Dorothy Pam. Yes. Yes. Pam Rooney. <laughs> Kathy Shane. Yes. Andy Steinberg. Yes. Jennifer Taub. Yes. Alicia Walker. Yes. Shalini Von Milne. Yes. Pat DeAngelis. No. <laughs> Anna Devlin Gothier. Yes. Lynn Greesmer is actually a no. Um, <laughs> Mandy Johanneke. I. Anika Lopes. Yes. Michelle Miller. I. 
it passes. There are 11 people say yes and two people say no. Right now, there's still nobody abstaining or nobody absent. The meeting's adjourned. Bye. <laughs> Good move, Andy.